Hi, I'm Adam Paul Seagram for MyDrawingsTutorials.com and today I'm going to show you how to paint this painting, basic painting of palm tree, ocean, and sky. In this part, we're going to be focusing on the sky and the background. For this painting, we'll be using acrylic paints, the white, the blue, and the green. Okay, for this lesson, we'll be using this kind of brush, and I like a larger brush for establishing backgrounds. And this is actually a house painter's brush, but it's very high quality. It also has very high quality uh, bristles and it has a beveled edge so that one can actually do line work as with it as well but it's very good for soft big backgrounds you're covering a large background so you want to use something that's a scale that moves easily and softly across the canvas often most people will, many people will use this kind of brush and that's okay too if that's what you like to do but i say if you do something big use something big to establish it then you've got your background finished you can come in later with this for details also in this series, and we should use it for all acrylic mixing, is the palette knife. It's also very handy. If you, you don't have this, you can use a popsicle stick or something like that. But this is great to have around. Make sure you wash it. I've just used it. I need to clean it again. Today we're going to establish a background for our work. And the way, first way to begin that is to figure out where you want your horizon line. Horizon line should be pretty level with the way it is in nature. So I suggest on our canvas, to measure with a ruler, set up, pick an area where you want it. Often it's best not to have an exact center, could have it higher or lower, but it depends on the subject matter. In this case, we're going to be painting a palm tree. So we would like the horizon line to be just a little bit low because the interest of the palm tree is on the top and the leaves. So we're gonna establish a horizon line. Let's say here, this is 20 inches, right about, mm, that would be 12 down from the top. And same here and same here. And we'll draw a slight line with a pencil, very soft because you want to be able to work it out later. Pencil, but the lead in pencil will, and we're using acrylic, so pencil is washed with, with water a bit, it will go away. We want to do it very soft and very light, just as a point of reference, so you have a balancing point. So we're going to begin with the background, and we're going to get some color out on our palette. We got some blue, basic blue, and some basic white, and we'll go with that and we're going to also use a little bit of this green because the ocean has a bit of green in it just a tad and we'll use a palette knife, knife to mix our colors i've got a little bit of water here if we need that and that's always good and a rag always have a rag on hand you never know when you're going to need it most so let's start get the, the palette just the knife a bit wet and we'll pull a little bit of white aside and a little bit of blue. Starts a little at a time. Look how powerful that blue is. Okay, so you need more white. Almost always you will. Okay, more here. We're gonna use it for both the sky and the ocean. So, I'm gonna be liberal. Their use of white. Always need more white for everything. That's a strong blue. Need more white. Put some white on the side so we can have varying degrees of color. Take just a little bit of that blue, some of that white, and mix it up here. There we go. Now, what we want to do is take the brush and keep, have our brush a bit fluid. I'm going to use larger brushes to do the sky in the background because we got a large area to fill, first of all. That's really important to get it right. We'll do some uh, indications of clouds, too. Here's our blue we're going to use for the sky. And we'll start with a washy move movement. Put a little bit of water in there. Let's get it soft. Soften it up. See how bad of water? And we'd say there's a bank of clouds here on the, si on the side. As you would see on the ocean, the clouds sit out at sea. I've lived in the tropics many times and I've seen how this happens. This is a natural phenomenon. And let that set up a bit. Get soft, smooth it out. Let it sit for a few minutes. And then we'll go down to the ocean. See, kind of those clouds kind of natural looking. Don't worry about making them perfect at this point. You can play with that later. Maybe put a little splotch of blue here and there. Um, just clouds, the thing about clouds, clouds is they change all the time. They're always moving, so you can't, just have to capture the feeling 
of what it feels like and they, remember that's okay. So we're going to uh, leave a little bit of negative space where we're putting the white clouds and we're going to let this blue set up a little bit and uh, I think what I'd like to do is use just a little bit of a rag here and just to soften the sky. See how I'm doing that? I'm going to just to pick up some of that water and then I'm going to brush over it again to soften it back down. You gotta let it sit so that some of that water evaporates. Now I'm going to move over to the ocean and use that same those same blues. And we've got a tad of green here. Once again, we're going to need more white. This is very strong pigment. These colors. The greens, because the ocean has more green in it especially in the tropics. Get a hint of turquoise going there. It's darker. Alright, so now we're just going to fill in broad strokes, long strokes, because the ocean always has a horizontal quality to it, unless it's a ferocious storm. And you might want to paint that sometime too. That's different. Just broad strokes. I'm adding water as I go. Adding a little bit of water, just keeping the paint that's in the brush. Now I'm approaching this line, this horizon line. It gets softer as you get to the top. There's less pigment because it's in the distance. It's foreshortened. The depth of color is close to you. So I, I use the edge of my brush. I like these big brushes because they tapered and you can use them. They're made for house painting, but they're great for art. You can actually cut by turning the brush to the side. You can use the sharp edge and follow that line. Just follow that line very carefully. Just let the brush travel along the line. I pull my body along as I pull the arm. I let my body pull the arm so that I get a straighter line that way. And you see, and then we do use this to add a little more of that texture, those elongated striations to give the ocean a depth. Like that. Let a little bit of white come through here and there. You might even but as you get closer to the shore, mess it up a little bit because you've got some surf coming in. Like that. Okay. Then back to the sky. I'm going to soften that up now. It's sitting. Getting softer. Okay, now let's go back to the clouds. And we're going to go take some direct white. There's a little blue in your brush still. That's okay. So start. Mushing into that just a bit to give there some more depth the clouds and now we're going to put some actual white into that negative space And I'm just going to put a little bit right on the on the canvas See there's a difference in the whites there. I've got a little bit of blue in my brush. That's okay Actually, I think I will wash out a little bit of that So we don't have so much Get that out now mush, Mushing these clouds around Pulling it out into this into the sky. Again, we need some more white. A lot of blue. Wash that brush out. Get all the color out. So we're going into pure white now. now. Oftentimes, I'd like because it's acrylic, I like to take it and sit it in the sunlight for a few minutes, just so that some of these paints can set up, and that's a good way to do it. Okay, now we're putting the white in again. Now we're going to follow the horizon line with the white, the white with a tad of blue in it, same as we did the other way. Just come along there. Nice clean line. Remember, move the arm with the body, pull your body over a little bit so that the wrist isn't doing all the work. You're using your arm as a, as a compass and as a, as a ruler. Okay, now there. Now that's our basic. We're going to want to do more to it, but it needs to set up for a minute. And we'll take some of this white. And we're going to add a little bit of striation into the ocean. Again, using the, the streaks of the brush to create that feeling. You see it's starting to look like an ocean already. And the sky is beginning to look like a sky. I want to put a little bit of this up in here, soften it down. Again. 
I think we need to let it sit in the sun for about two minutes so that we get some of this water evaporated. Another option for drying the canvas if you don't have a sunny climate is to use a hairdryer. And I've, done, I've started it in the, in the sun and I'm going to complete it here. So you can... Okay, now we're going to firm up some of these areas and clean them up a bit just so they're softer. Like the sky, to get the streaks out of the sky, take some soft, soft blue, soft color. Come in and soften it. Takes it right down into the realm of believability. Yes. Softens everything down. See why a bigger brush is handy here. If you have a small one, it's going to take you forever. Although some people like to work with small brushes and are very good at that. I am not. And I find that this just expedites it. So I can get to the real interest, which is the palm tree. Work those streaks out, soften it down, soften our edges again. The thing about the tropics and the sky is it's always very soft, gentle. The palm tree too has a subtle, subtle kind of lilting feeling to it, listing, like it gives you a feeling of laziness, and relaxation. So we want to give that, impart that feeling into your painting. Okay, now let's do the same with the ocean. I'm going to use that same color. The Impressionist used to teach that you find the colors of the sky in the landscape, always. Well, here in this case, the ocean is your landscape. So just put some more of that in there. Come across my horizon line again once more, just to, to define it. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this in, touch of water, just a touch, the very tip of the brush, bristles. So again, it's got that, that linear look to the ocean. And here, not doing much to that, just do almost a dry brush here, scratching it a bit. I'm going to add a hint of white a little to soften the bottom, and give a feeling of surf. Just a touch of water, not too much water. Again, kind of giving it some flavor of action, movement. The surf has a splashing sense about it. There we got that. And then later we can add a little more highlight. So we'll dry this. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of a bank, a shoreline. First, we're going to wash out this brush so it's clean, so we don't actually contaminate the color. And lock it over here, I'm using. Okay, so for the, um, I'm going to switch palettes for a minute. I've got another one set aside. In this case, we'll use some more white again. And basically, the beach sand is pretty white. I want to put a hint of color in it, very subtle. I'm just going to use it barely black. I just didn't even squeeze it. And I've got some blue over there I can pull in if I want to shadow. But right now we're going to start with the white because there's, it's going over the blue. So you're going to, I'm going to put it just a pinch, the tip of the brush into the black on the other one so just to soften it down. And I'm going to put a hint, same thing, yellow, so I can warm it up. And that's pretty good, I think, to make brown. We want a tiny amount of red, and that's the very smallest amount to make it warmer. And we'll put some more yellow in it. Okay, then we got some sand. That's nice. And much farther my brush. We'll just start that as a wash, and I'm going to add more white to it, to give it some thickening, so that it has coverage. There we go. See, it's not pure white anymore. All right, so we're going to just use this angle here to create a shoreline. And again, we can enhance this later. Just want to soften it up like that. I've let my brush sort of drag into the water so that it just kind of looks like it would be almost under the water. The sand is kind of, water's washing into the sand. And then I want to add some more white. Just establish that area. Okay, more white. And we'll dry that. 
and we'll put a little more on so it becomes a little more pure. Remember, start, you can always start light and add more later. It's like a build, acrylic is a buildup of layers. Your best painting is you do an underpainting first, you set up the background and the space you want to experience, and then you can refine it later. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Okay, now we're going to add, now that we have this primary underground kind of foundation for the beach sand, we're going to add some color to it to soften it up and make it brighter and lighter so we have a foundation for the tree to grow out of. So we're going to add, just take some pure white now. And because there's still a bit of pigment in our brush, and just put that right over it. You see it's not pure white anymore. It looks more like white beach sand with it. Just the smallest amount of water. Again, and keep it, don't take it all the way up the edge. Let that be a sort of a blending. And I would, as I get my brush gets drier, I'm gonna blend that into that area we did before. So it's just very, very soft going into the water. Uh, it's not really not clear where the line is because it isn't. It's under the water. Just keep brushing until it feels right. Soft. Very soft. It's a movement. Okay. And now we're going to enhance the cloud and soften the cloud. So I'm going to wash my brush out so there's no beach sand in it. So do that. We'll go back to the pure white again. Just pure white in the brush. I'm going to soften these clouds. See how I'm using the brush to just kind of give it a little edge. Soften, leave some of that blue there. Some nice depth of blue here. We're going to push some white up into that so it feels natural. Same thing here. I'll let this streak out a bit. Soften. See, I've got less paint in my brush now. I'm just letting leave some of that blue there so it's soft. The clouds are soft most of the time. A little more white. Down here, push that up into the sky so it gives a roughly edge, soft edge. Any hard lines, just kind of soften them down. You don't need to eradicate them completely, just let them be there. There we go. Anything on the edge. Okay, and now I've got still a little bit of white in my brush. Once again, I'm going to pull it across the ocean just very softly. Soften that down. I'm gonna, now I'm going to take this brush go right over that line because I've got white in my brush. Makes it softer, less distinct. My horizon. So it's all about making it softer. And I've left it darker down at the bottom. Okay, and we might take a bit of white and put a little reflection. We're going to reflect the clouds in the ocean. You see this oftentimes, but you don't want the whole to drag the whole way. You just want to hear where you have highlights, drop them down into here. Watch how I do this. I'm actually having almost a reflection in a sense it is. Okay. Then I'm going to take the pure white into the sand. I'm going to keep some of this color, but I'm going to pull the white down into here in the foreground to lighten the foreground. So yeah, keep some streaks in it. It's all right. I really encourage you to use a little bit big brushes for these backgrounds. Now, also I'll put a tad of water, just a touch on the very tip of my brush, and I'm going to throw some of that into the surf and just scratch it in there. That's a movement. And this also pulls the sky into the foreground. And streak it back. Again, nature repeats itself. Streaks and streaks. In this case. Leave some of that blue there. And just a little white there. So there's our background. A little more white right here on the horizon. You've almost got a painting of it right here. This is the first part of our painting. We've completed all the backgrounds. We can always enhance them just a little bit later, but they're pretty much finished for now. I'd say 75, 80% done. So you have a background, let's let that dry, and we'll go to the palm tree later. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the experience of painting. For more acrylic painting tutorials, be sure to sign up for our newsletter.
You can do so by going to the URL on screen or click the link in the description. So until next time, happy painting!